Hello, hello everyone. Ted Simpson here. Ready to do another... Uh, ready to do another fine painting for you. I've got my 12 by 16 canvas up here. Ooh. Plenty of liquid white on my brush. Almost too much. We'll see. And uh, this canvas, like in my last video, has a light gray gesso coating. Makes it really easy to see the liquid white. Make sure you've got enough on there. Basically, if you can't see the gray, you've got enough liquid white. Now, if it's just dripping pure white, obviously that'd be a little too much. But this really demonstrates how little liquid white you need. Okay, so I like to really just work it, work it in there. There's way too much over here, so I just pick some up on my brush and I move it over. And this happens so quick. Small canvas, big two inch brush. Light little touch. Just a thin fingerprint out there is all we're going to need. And I'm going to clean out this two-inch brush. I don't want, don't want there to be too much. Out of it. We are going wacky today. This is one of Bob's wacky skies. Very interesting color scheme. And you know, occasionally you see these colors in nature. And if you don't, well. You can always imagine this being some kind of different world, maybe. So, today's painting, we're going to be using a little bit of the alizarin crimson and uh, the yellow ochre. Alizarin crimson, yellow ochre. Mix those together, roughly. Maybe you want yours more to the yellow side or more to the red side. It's up to you. It's just, oh, ooh-wee, kind of a bloody, blood orange, bloody, a blood orange look, kind of a, maybe even a peachy tone, depending on what you do, how you mix it, you're going to get all sorts of different results, and I'm just kind of throwing it on there, little light areas in there, if you want a little bolder in the corners as we normally do. You can have it up there, but look at that. It's really only like a third of the sky. Now, I'm just wiping my brush on a paper towel here, getting most of that paint off the brush, just most of it, and I can just go over it, some light crisscross strokes. The more and harder you push, the more you'll move paint. The lighter you go over it, will soften. Take out those little brush marks. Look at that. Look how it just mixes with that liquid white and it will keep getting lighter the more you go over it. I'm not going to worry about it too much. So, I'm going to take a little bit more of the alizarin crimson, a little more of the yellow ochre, and then a little bit of dark sienna. A little bit of dark sienna. That's going to darken things and add all sorts of funkiness. Oh, yeah. and that's what we like to do. We like to add funkiness. Maybe a little cloud shape here. Look how billowy this cloud looks. And you know what? I'm gonna just have a clean, dry brush here. And that's what I'm gonna use for my blending. Lots of little swirls. Crisscrosses. Ever so gentle. We wanna see it. We wanna see it soft, but we wanna blend it all away. Now Bob here, he took that brush and he tapped a little bit. 
Maybe get a little more paint on the brush. There it goes. He tapped a couple of little stringer clouds off in the distance. Very lightly just go over them. Look at that. Just stuck my finger right into my little lid full of liquid white. Oh, there's a happy accident for you. And let's have another little billowy cloud here. Put it on, stir it out, fluff it up, leave it alone. <laughs> now, sometimes when I'm doing these clouds, I, I lose a little billow. I think I did the same thing up there if you were to rewind. So I just remake my little billowy bit, make it look a little rounder, stir it down. Fluff, crisscross. I think we got it. So, we're doing a version of Bob's Mountain Rhapsody, I believe it's called. And I'm changing things up as I normally do to. Uh, give it a different flavor and to get it to fit to a 12 by 16. So when you're doing a uh, 18 by 24, this is definitely going to be different. You got more room to do stuff. So I'm taking a bit of alizarin crimson, a little Prussian blue, and I added a little bit of dark sienna in there too. So the crimson and blue make a really dark purple, kind of a plum-like purple. The dark sienna dulls it down even further. Oh, pull it out as flat as I can get it. Cut off my roll of paint. Oh, and let's make this wacky mountain. He makes this kind of, I've, I can call them like little mesas. You know, it's got a little bit of a flat top to it, it seems. And I've changed my mind. I changed my mind. I'm going to use the small knife. There we go. That allows me to have a little bit more control here. But I'm dropping in all these little lumps and bumps. I'm not, uh, I'm not using a big wide area here. It might do a little too much for what I'm trying to accomplish here. Just pushing that paint right in. And you know what? Maybe make this a little taller. Looking for a, an interesting outside edge here. And I'm going off of a, a picture, you know I love my Bob Ross one-a-day calendar shots here. So I'm just trying to make an interesting outer edge. If it's exactly the same, so be it. Usually isn't. And just scraping off the excess. Kind of wanders down this way a little bit. That didn't work. There we go. Now well, there's a clean line there. So I'm just pushing some paint right into the fabric and scraping off the excess. Just trying to see what I'm doing here. Put this up a little higher. everything up a little higher here. I don't know if I did it. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. 
All right, let me clean off this one inch brush super quick. Super clean, super dry. Let's start drawing down this mountain. Oh, this might, mountain might be big. Look at that liquid white doing its job. Ooh, there we go. Allowing us to slide color. Once in a while I knock off the extra paint. If you want to keep moving this dark color down, every time you go down you pick up a little bit of that liquid white. So I stop and wipe out the, the knife and that allow or the brush, whichever we're calling it today. That allows us to uh, keep moving color without lightening the top. I don't want to lighten the top up. There we go. So we got a nice little area there. Um, create this mountain scene. And look how faded we can get this. I don't really think we're going to be going uh, all the way down there. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, let's cut it off. And let's have a little bit of this color down here anyway, because it's going to be in shadow and all the snow that we're going to put on. Oh, did I just spoiler alert? It is a winter scene. And we're going to uh, have some of this shadow color in the scene here. That helps the snow not be too bright. See that? There's some, there's some shadow down here. All right, so I'll take my knife. Might need a new paper towel. This one's getting awfully, awfully stained up. I'll just fold it over. All right, so got my titanium white up here. I'm gonna take a little bit, pull it down. Let's add a little bit of that yellow ochre. Maybe a touch of that crimson color. Ooh, a little blue snuck in there. I pick it up, I pull it out. Let's add a little bit more. I really want to see this reflected sky color here. All right, let's wipe the knife, gather it up, mix it a little bit, pull it down. Oh boy, a little bit more of the, there we go. Nice orangey color, huh? There we go. Kind of marbly. Let's see what we get. Let's start right on up here and just, just start grazing it. You see how much lighter it is on the canvas? All darkened down when I mix up that nice little roll. You know, this is not quite the color I'm looking for. So, I'm going to go ahead and make up a little more here. Starting with my white. More yellow ochre. More yellow ochre. Olden now. That's it. Maybe a touch of bright red in there. Oh boy, look at that. That's a little more in line. A little more to the yellow side rather than the, the crimson side. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Let's 
Let's see if I can't lay a little bit of this color on top. There it goes. Covers that previous color up a little bit. I like it. Hopefully I made enough so I don't have to remake it. <laughs> Finally got the right color here. Hopefully I made enough. I'm just dropping some of this in. One little roll. Ooh, there we go. One little roll at a time. Working my way. Getting some of it out there. Is that a little hair? It is. Oh, that's going to bug me. Yeah, I think I got it. Okay. Now, maybe way off in the distance there. This little, there's a little peak over here. It has just a little bit of sun kind of zinging off the side there. I like it. Now let's make up our shadow. Our shadow color is a bit of the white, a bit of the Prussian blue. Let's just put it right under here on the Prussian. Maybe a touch of that background color. A little more dirty grayish blue. There we go. I like to scrape it up because oftentimes here there's a little layer of white right next to the palette. So you don't want to like cut a roll and have a bunch of white there. So you scrape it up once or twice. Make sure you're getting some, make sure you're getting the shadow color that you like. Now Bob does this interesting trick here. It's a more of a sideways pull, upside down knife action. You can certainly hold the knife a different way here, or whatever, whatever way suits you. Pulling down, and it's all about the angle. I try to keep that knife move. Keep it moving. You don't want to keep going over the same spot again and again. It just keeps blending away on you. You want to see some of the shadow color and a little bit of that background color remaining. It doesn't all have to go away. So, dropping some of this in over here. Don't forget, got a little bit of a shadow happening on this peak. All about these angles here. Yeah, I was worried about the highlight, thought it almost ran out of shadow too. But maybe get that in there a little bit. Oh, cover up your highlights if you can help it. You want to go right up next to them and pull the opposite direction. Get it right up there and pull some of it out. There we go. Little tough little trick when you make that highlight and it kind of comes out a little bit, makes it a little tougher to get the shadows in there, but you can do it. So there is the start of it. And often here we'll come back to our highlight color and I'll, I'll clean up this edge a little bit. Here we go. Add a little bit of that highlight color, create another, maybe a little section there, a little outcropping, so that I come back with my knife and the shadow color, and I clean it up again. Add a little bit of shadow, pulling away from any new highlights that you create. Yeah, let's see, maybe a little more shadow here and there. I think we got uh, some time here to play around a little bit. I think I did this in a recent video too, where I'm going to take a little bit of lighter blue, a little lighter shadow, 
and maybe maybe zing down a little bit here and there maybe right up at the top as well just a little variation And then, if I were to do the reverse here, I'm going to take a little bit of my shadow color I have left, add a bit more of my background color to it, to make a darker shadow. And in some of these areas here, ooh, wasn't dark enough. Add a little bit of a dark, deep shadow in little spots here. See that? Add some little interest in there and with the small edge of the knife you can sneak a little bit here and there maybe I could take this and, and bring out a little bit of a outcropping this way a little bit indication of some highlights zinging out this way and then conversely a little bit of the shadow Pulling across thusly. Something like that. All right, now we've got a little bit of this highlight color. And Bob created this kind of a little bit of a hill thing happening here. You know, the mountain starts to flatten out a little bit, and we have kind of a little rounded area here. So I'm just pulling my knife in a little different motion. You can come back and with a little bit of shadow and sneak some shadow into these spots here and there. Already here, it looks like a little 3D effect that we're creating. Just by pulling a certain direction. In the lights and the darks. I added a little bit of highlight. Got to come back and add a touch of shadow here and there. Ooh, that was a lot. <laughs> Let me wipe my knife off. I kind of overloaded it a little bit, but I can take a little bit of this and just put it over here and pull some over here. When I do the, the misting of the mountain, we'll, we'll uh, soften all that. Now, let's come back here and I took a little bit of my pure titanium white and whatever color I had left, look how much lighter this is. Just like I did over here, I highlighted, light, lightened up the shadow. Maybe I can add a couple of bright spots here. Just some, once again, variation. There. One last bit here, I promise. All right, let's take our mostly cleaned out one inch brush. If it's not clean enough, clean it. Make sure that it's really, really dry. Now, we're gonna create a little bit of mist and fog here. Just by tapping, gently, 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 following the basic angles that we created sweep up like we're softening a cloud that just takes out the tap marks tapa 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 
sweep a sweep a and look how we create this misty area right here at the bottom of the mountain. You can even stretch it out a little bit just by tapping. Look at that. Ooh -wee. That grew quick, didn't it? Same thing over here. A little bit of shadow. Turn it into mist. Sweep it up. I went a little bit outside my border there, but I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. Alrighty, righty. Let's see. Let me do a little bit of cleanup here. To do a little bit of cleanup, first I gotta have my knife mostly clean. I gotta have a clean paper towel too. And some of this shadow color, I think we'll use it. Let me just put it right over there. I don't think we'll be using that green. Let me get rid of that. All right. Well, I'm definitely going to need more paint. So, I'm going to put out a little bit of Midnight Black. A little bit more of the Prussian Blue. Wherever that might be. Wherever that... Oh, it's right here in front of me. Right on my shelf. A little bit more of the Prussian Blue. Let's take our big old knife here. I'm going to take all of my crimson that I have out here, all of that purpley color I, I created, and I'm going to add, oh, some, some Prussian blue to darken it down, some midnight black to even make it even darker, and let's see what color I create. Should be kind of a dark bluish purple, right? The crimson and the blue. And then black. I like it. Now, let's see here. I'm gonna take oh just a just a bit of that white. What the heck? A little bit of that white, some of that color I created, and just lighten it up a little bit. As you know, Bob tells us here that as things get closer to us, they get darker in value. We're not ready to do the extreme foreground yet, so having a little bit of white in it helps give that, that little bit of depth and distance. And our fan brush should help us make plenty of these little happy trees. and cut off the edge of our mountain, the bottom edge, and all of a sudden jump us into, well, I guess we could call it the mid-ground, huh? So we're gonna make smiley trees today, so my handle is above center, and I just push up. Let those bristles bend upward, and I create a little smile. There it is. Let's make a bigger one. I'm overlapping some of that mountain to help create that sense of depth. There we go. There's a nice tall one there. I like to do the whole tree and then I'll come back and I'll, I'll make an adjustment. If I missed a little bit there or here, I can always make an adjustment. There we go. And, ooh, maybe, maybe a little buddy over here, just a little one. Push, gotta bend those bristles. Happens quick, that was like six hits. Okay, now, I'm gonna take a little bit of that same color and just push up how it creates all this little foliage, all these little bushy things happening here with all the little sticks and twiggers sticking up. How far out do we want to go? Let's just go ahead and ugh, let's just make it all the way across. What the heck? 
Maybe some of them are taller, some of them are shorter, some of them are darker, some of them are lighter. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. Now, in a shocking turn of events, Bob took a little bit of that same color, thinned it down with some paint thinner with our liner brush, and maybe we put in a couple little little dead little dead things here. Maybe there's a Got a couple of little, little things coming off it. Old dead, dead branches. If it's not flowing off, I'm going to get a little bit more paint thinner. Bring my brush to a nice point, and just pull down and away, and it can create some little, little dead limbs here and there. And, you know, I think we'll add another one, but not quite yet. Maybe raise this one up a little. Ooh, raise that one up a lot. There we go. Now, you got to remember here, this is paint thinner, and if you keep going over it, it will just melt into into nothingness here. So, try not to mess with it. I'm going to add a couple little sticks and twigs back here in between these trees here and over there. And that's it for now. I'm going to clean out my fan brush here. I could have just used another fan brush, but I thought of that after I started doing it. Okay, now a little bit of the liquid white and some of this shadow color I created. If I don't have enough, I can create some more with some liquid white, some titanium white, a little bit of Prussian. Load plenty of color up into the brush and let's add some highlight. Just Quickly, briefly, partly, <laughs> all those leaves, all those help us create our highlights. Okay, maybe one more, a couple more there. Now with hardly any paint in my brush here, I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more and hopefully get a little lighter look. You can see it's a little bit lighter now need much in my brush. I'm pulling away, getting most of the paint out. And let's create some little highlights here. Sort of pushing, letting some of it come off, highlighting some of that underbrush, leaving some of it dark. There we go. Lovely. All right, I already know I'm going to need more white. I could just see doing this in a class. I'm going to need like two tubes of white for every uh, student. We do burn through it. So a little bit of the titanium white worked into my brush. Heck, if I had a little touch of blue or a little bit off white, that's okay. And, ooh, which way are we going to go here? I'm just going to go about halfway here and I, I press in, getting like, um, like a 64th of an inch. I know, very, very specific, right? And I pull across. I don't want to take out all my dark here. But pulling a little bit of it out creates some shadow. And you might notice here I'm pulling horizontal. I want this to look like flat land. 
if you pull down, it's really going to change the angle. You can see that here. If I change the angle a little bit, all of a sudden it looks like a hill. But if I pull mostly to the side, it'll look mostly flat. There we go. Just what I was looking for. And I tell you, you can keep going, but I implore you, don't just make this all stark white. A touch of color in my brush, but look at the shadow that I've left here. There's a nice, there's a nice little scene. Now I could say this painting is done, or we can keep going. We can make, we can make lots of stuff happen here. I say let's make a lot of stuff happen. So let me get rid of this stuff here. Ooh, boy, what a drip. Get rid of all that stuff. I tell you what, I'm going to go right into a little bit of that blue, the rest of my black, all this other stuff, and let's just make everything darker. Plenty of color here. Even a touch of that dark sienno. I'm going crazy now. favorite brush here, the black handled oval brush. I'm going to pull some color into it. Wiggle, wiggle, jiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, jiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, pull. We're looking for that nice chiseled wedge of paint. Look at those bristles collapse. And that's going to give us a nice sharp edge so that we can make some big old shaggy Shagadelic, shaggy, shaggylicious evergreens. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what here. Let's go ahead and let's make one right about here. Little one right there, just tapping down. Oh, there we go. Got to get that nice point. Ooh, still didn't make that nice point. I'll tell you what. There it is. <laughs> I cheated. I cheated. You can say it. I cheated. I used the knife. And that one goes in nice and easy. And... Once you have this laid out, it's hard to get it into the, into the brush, so I use my knife. I get it back up into a nice pile so I can easily load a lot more. Wiggle, wiggle, and a pull. Wiggle, wiggle, and a pull. More paint. Chiseled wedge of color. Oh my lord, I'm going to say this one's right on off the screen. Maybe we don't even see the top screen canvas. And I'm just going to tap and work my way down. There we go. Oh boy, that's a big tree. Keep in mind, this is just the dark parts here. Ooh, this is a big tree. It's going to come all the way down. Right on down near the bottom. Nice dark tree. Alright. A little bit of... Ooh, I can even push up here. Create a little bit of stuff underneath like we did before. And 
I'm going to take a little bit of that thin down onto the liner brush technique. Maybe we got another dead tree, right? There we go. Thin it down. Maybe could make a couple little branches here. So, let me clean out that oval brush. Ooh, that dirties up the paint thinner. That was a lot of paint. I should have wiped it out on a paper towel first. That's okay. This is my third painting of the day here, so that paint thinner is getting kind of messy anyway. All right, so what am I doing here? I got liquid white, uh, my oval brush. I'm actually going to use a brand new oval brush here, so I know that all that dark color is out. A little bit of the liquid white, titanium white, lots and lots of color here. Let's let's tint it. Let's make it a little bit of reflected light from the sky. So that's yellow ochre, or maybe a touch of dark sienna. And we could use bright red, but I'm going to use a little bit of, or alizarin crimson, but we can use bright red too for our purposes here. A little bit more of the yellow ochre, lots of color up in the brush, maybe even some Indian yellow. I tell you what, I'm going to grab just a touch of the crimson. I do want it a little darker red, not so bright. Your mileage may vary. You can have it whatever color. That's the color. Look at that. Very similar to the sky. Pull that color out nice and chisely. And let's see if we got it dark enough. Oh, I think so. It's not coming off super easy, so another drop of the liquid white or a drop of paint thinner, and that's just. Nice little sections of highlight. Really looks like it's reflected from the sky. I love it. I did the monster tree first, didn't I? Well, we can do this one over here, too. too dark you just reload and drop in some brighter stuff there we go all right maybe a little bit of that lighter blue and we'll create some little highlights here as bright as you want them Ooh, I forgot to put out a little bit of the stuff there, so... Oh gosh, a little bit of that dark color. We'll just push up some here. There we go. And here we go. Push up some highlights. hopefully clean out of my one inch brush a touch more of the liquid I'm sorry the titanium white and let's create a little 
highlight coming off of this little outcropping here. Pulling it away, creating a little shadow. There we go. And then a little bit of the white. Pull the opposite way. Look at that depth we got on this painting here. I like it. Very, I love that weird orangey highlight. And look at that, that little bit that I didn't like on the mountain got covered up with the tree. So just like that, we've got our completed painting. I'll tell you what, maybe even a little bit of this orangey stuff, a little bit down here, some of that highlighted in there, along with the blue. There we go. Alrighty, look how fun we did here. I'm not even sure what that meant. Look how much fun we had. Yeah, Alright, so a little bit of bright red. Sign my name. So if you are in the Michigan area, look for this sometime in a class coming soon to a location near you. If you ever want to see where I'm teaching at, you can always check out my website, naturesbrushstudio.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.